Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Play Misty for Me is a 1971 American psychological thriller film that was directed by and starred Clint Eastwood in his directorial debut. Supporting him in this endeavor was Jessica Walter and Donna Mills. The screenplay was written by regular Eastwood collaborators Joe Himes and Dean Reisner. And the storyline follows a disc jockey named Dave Carver, played by Eastwood, as he attracts the amorous attentions of a demented fan named Evelyn Draper, played by Jessica Walter. Evelyn lets Dave pick her up at a bar, and then later at her apartment, Evelyn admits that she's the cooing caller who repeatedly asks Dave to play the Errol Garner classic, Misty. From that point on, this movie is a lesson in how a one casual date can turn your life all around. Evelyn stalks Dave everywhere, ruins business lunches, assaults his maid, mutilates his house and all of his belongings, and later threatens to butcher his girlfriend, Toby, played by Donna Mills. After watching this movie, you'll never be able to hear that song Misty again without looking over your shoulder. The script was originally conceived by Joe Himes, who's a former model and dancer turned secretary, and it was polished by Dean Reisner. The story was then acquired by Ross Hunter while he was at Universal Pictures. It's based on a novel that was written by Paul Gillette. Before Mel Paso production co-founder Irving Leonard died, he and Eastwood discussed a final film, one giving Eastwood the artistic control that he desired by making his directorial debut. And this was that film. Eastwood went on to reflect on this new idea and the path of directing that he had. He said that after 17 years, of bouncing his head against the wall, hanging around sets, and maybe being influenced by certain camera setups with his own opinions involved, watching actors go through all kinds of hell without any help, and working with both good directors and bad directors. He felt that he had come to the point where he was ready to make his own picture. He says that he stored away all the mistakes that he had made, and he saved up all the good things that he had learned, which allowed him enough control on his own projects to get what he wanted out of the actors. The storyline was originally set in Los Angeles, but at Eastwood's insistence, the film was shot in a more comfortable surroundings, that of the actual Carmel by the Sea, where he could shoot scenes at the local radio station, bars, restaurants, and at some of his friend's house, because this is where he lived. The idea of another love interest with a level-headed girlfriend of Toby added to the plot was suggested by Sonia Shurness, an editor who had been with Eastwood when he was initially spotted for Rawhide. Filming commenced in Monterey, California in September of 1970. Although this was Eastwood's debut as a film director, Don Siegel stood by to help him and also to do a little acting in the project too. The Sardine Factory is still at the same location as in the film at Prescott and Wave Streets, just one block from Cannery Row in Monterey. The radio station, KRML, was actually a jazz station in Carmel, whose studios were located in the Eastwood Building at San Carlos and 5th Street, in the same building as the Hog's Breath Inn, which is a restaurant that Eastwood actually owns. The rights to the song Misty were obtained after Eastwood saw Errol Garner perform at the Concord Music Festival in 1970. Eastwood also paid $2,000 for the 
for the use of the song The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face by Roberta Flack. Meticulous planning and efficient directorship by Eastwood, which would become one of his trademarks, enabled the film to be made nearly $50,000 short of its $1 million budget, and it was completed four or five days ahead of schedule. Eastwood does the same thing with his movies today, and that's the reason the studios love him. The very first scene that Eastwood shot in the entire project was with his former director, Don Siegel's cameo, where he plays Murph, the bartender. As a complete joke, Eastwood made Siegel do 11 takes on this simple scene, and then turned to the cameraman and told him that he could now put the film in the camera. All done as a way to get back at his good friend and director, Don Siegel, and the many takes that he was required to make in the movies that they did together. Universal Studios reportedly wanted Lee Remick to be cast in the role of Evelyn. And then there's some accounts that say that Sandra Locke read for the part, but that was never mentioned in her diaries or press interviews. It's also said that Steve McQueen actually turned down the lead role, claiming that the female lead was stronger than the male. Now, old Clint was notorious for sleeping with his co-stars, but Donna Mills has always denied the rumors that she ever had an affair with Mr. Eastwood. Now, when Mills started out wanting to be an actress, she didn't even have an agent. So what she would do is look through this paper called Backstage for casting news. There would be readings for plays, and she would go there, and it would be like an apartment. It was actually kind of scary. She would read the script of the play, and it didn't seem like a play at all. It seemed like some kind of a sex thing. Fortunately, Mills was able to navigate out of those situations, but there's one that really surprised her later on. One day, some guy came up to her on the street and said, you'd be perfect for Daisy May in Al Cap's new show. She just immediately felt like that this must be fate. The guy told her that Al Cap wanted to see her. Knowing who he was, she felt comfortable going to his apartment. And when she arrived and walked in, there he stood, completely naked. She fled immediately from the apartment and began crying hysterically. But apparently... Al did this many, many times to many girls. Whether anyone was ever assaulted by him, I don't know. But it sure seems like that was the intention of his behavior. Go back and watch this really good movie. I've always liked this film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.